Welcome to another Roll for Crit review. Today we're actually looking at Stop Thief, not the old version, but the new one from Restoration Games. Yeah, this is an update of that old classic which uh, we haven't played. So this is our first time taking a first foray into the brand new modern style of it. Mm -hmm. It is a competitive game, at least at its core, we'll talk more about that later, in which everyone's trying to stop thieves. Yeah. Makes sense. Each thief will reward you money and also possibly some additional incentives to help you catch even more thieves. Yeah, they all have kind of their own special abilities that will occur. Uh, you each have a little investigator. You're moving around the board. There are four main sections. And the game is app integrated. That's yes. That's really the big thing. You know, yeah, that's in the old play. one, I believe there was a little device, like it's on timer, that tell you. But in this one, it's an app that will make noises for the thief. So you'll hear such as the, a door opening, meaning they've opened a door. Would you like to play some noises? Yeah, so for example, <laughs> you might every turn you'll get a clue as to where the thief might be. So there's not actually a physical thief down there. Uh, you're, just, you're just trying to guess where they are. So you'll hear. And that means that they're on one of these door spaces. And they're moving through it. They have some other little rules like that. Right, like for instance, they can't double back to the same place they just came from. Uh, and you know they're going to be on one of these numbered spaces, whereas the investigators move from these circles as well that don't have numbers. They also move al along the foot line so they can't teleport around yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you kind of have an idea where they're going to be headed. And if they hit one of these red spots, they may rob the place, uh, which increases their value because they just got some more money on, on their heads. So you'll start hearing noises like you'll hear a door, a rob, then a window. Looking around, you might be able to get, OK, he has to be either here or here. And it becomes this fun little puzzle of trying of trying to remember the sounds in the right order be like, okay, if there's a footsteps, you can only be here, here, or here, because there's a door first or something. Yeah, and so because it's competitive, you're not working together, so you're not like discussing this uh, outright. Uh, instead, you're all trying to figure out where they are better than everyone else. And there's even sometimes some cards that you have on your turn will let you get private tips, which will clue you into where they were last seen and give you a leg up on your opponents. Uh, and that's, that's also, you know, you have a hand of cards. That's how you actually play the game. Each one has a number. And depending on what number it is, that's how many spaces you can move. Uh, and once you have put it down, it's down until you play a card that lets you pick your cards back up again. So you kind of want to, it's kind of a balance of when do I use my good movement cards or when do I save them because then you got to waste the turn to get them back. Right. In addition, each player is actually a bit asymmetric. For example, I believe the yellow one that you're playing with actually is the only one with 12s. So right. you can really gun it. Right. When uh, my character here, for example, actually steals money from investigators. <laughs> Essentially, that's the way the game works. You just take turns trying to stop that thief, and whoever has, when you hit a certain amount of money, that player is the winner. But in addition, because this is an app game, Restoration Studios has actually been updating the app for free. They've included a retro mode, which is very cute, uh, and also a co-op mode in which you actually are all working together to catch the, what was it, Atlantic 13? The uh, Atlantic, Danny Atlantic and the Atlantic 7. seven There's only seven of them. <laughs> in which they're on the board as a group running around. And every time you catch one of the group, they run two spaces. And if they're able to rob 10 spaces before you catch them all, they win. Yeah. Or if you run out of money because you make too many wrong guesses. Uh, very challenging. It's very interesting when we tried it, and it makes a lot of the character abilities different. Like, for example, one character, I believe is the purple player, before he moves on his special abilities, he gets to move another investigator. So in the co-op mode, that made that really useful to be like, I can actually make you get there faster. Yeah, yeah, you can actually use it to help instead of hinder. Right. <laughs> yeah, and they're also coming out with uh, a one versus all mode, where one player would be the thief themselves, as well as a solo mode. Those aren't available at the time we're doing this review, mm -hmm. but they're in the works. But we did get to try both the competitive base game and the co-op game, which you will get if you buy the game right now, which is pretty cool. And it makes perfect sense, that co-op mode. I'm really glad they're adding stuff like that because it just feels like the kind of game where there are so many of those possibilities that, that you could have at play. And uh, I think both of them work equally well in our experience. And is there, do you, what do you think? Do you prefer co-op or compete? I think I comp uh, prefer the competitive a little bit more, but that's not to say because I don't like the co-op mode. The co-op mode was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like the competitive mode partly because I really enjoy the, 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 the unique robbers' abilities and stuff, right, those which aren't part of the 
uh, that mode. But it's still so much fun in both modes, because both modes, this is the core mechanic of the game, is to be, all right, door, foot, foot, door. <laughs> yeah, the thing that I like about the co-op mode is that you will get to as a group have those Exactly. So I think they, the, game, the game supports both very well. It doesn't feel like, you know, sometimes it feels like it's tacked on. I think the trade-off in that mode, though, is sometimes if you're depending on how many people you're playing with goes up to four I believe uh, sometimes like if you go one way and the thief went somewhere else you kind of feel useless for a few turns that you can't do whereas in the competitive well, mode that you you're trying to make people feel useless because you want them to lose the truth is in both modes I think I mean the nature of the beast kind of mm -hmm. deal that will happen with you if you go make a wrong choice for example in the competitive mode or the thief happens, because each time a thief spawns a new place, if you caught the thief here, and let's say Red was winning, and it just happens to spawn here, you're like, oh, of course that would happen. Right, right, that can be a bummer. <laughs> Which is the part of the randomness, I guess. But it, even though that is possible, you still have a lot of fun just trying to solve it. And maybe, if you're lucky, you could be like, maybe Red just won't catch that, and maybe I can swoop around and get it. Yeah, and it's not like the game takes a super long time, so mm -hmm. you don't feel like, oh, like some games where, oh no, I just I wasted two hours of my life or something. It's not nothing like it, that. No, it's not one of those things. I, I, I guess this happens more in competitive. I think usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could happen in this game, but very hard to. Where like, there's no way I can win this, so I need to sit here for the next. 30 minutes or so and just watch the two winning players. Yeah, you, you know, that's why you have those big cards that can help you hopefully catch up. Plus there's these subway stops where you can kind of teleport around the board a little bit, so that's another catch up. I am very excited for the solo mode because after playing the co-op, the solo mode just seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, you know, while you're playing, I think a big part of what makes it engaging is the board itself is really fun to look at. It's it's busy, yeah. but in a way that's cool. easy to read. The footprints actually are glossy compared to the rest of the board, so you can see it really nicely. And I mean, the box is just yeah, fantastic. It's a super clean look. Components uh, are... Yeah, the meeples are, are they're simple, they're colorful, you know where you are, you know what you're doing. Uh, it's, I, I really think that like the, the, this board could be a make or break for the game because if it's too hard to find stuff, then it's no good. But if it's too simple, it's too easy, you're not interested, it's a really nice balance of stuff going on, but there's not too much clutter. Right, and because of the, the way the numbers work too, it's still easy to be like, okay, uh, like if you got a personal clue that told you in the hundreds, you know this is the hundred area, this is the four hundred area. Yeah, and if it wasn't, I don't know if we made it very clear, the way you actually try to find the thief is you do enter into the app a number, so it'll be like, oh, I think he's at 244, <laughs> and then... Oh. No, I didn't enter a real, uh, a real space, so it <laughs> didn't work because it was invalid because the game knows. It's a smart app. I was just messing around. But if you were in the right place and the seats actually started somewhere and you had the clues, uh, that's the way it works. It, it, it keeps track of what you're doing, and it's all very intuitive, very smartly programmed. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun, light game uh, that definitely harkens back to that old school style, which is, uh, I think, what Restoration is all about. But, in a, in a, you know, they updated it. Yeah, like I said, we can't really compare this to the first one. But looking at, like, thinking of that old style, of, like, where there was that buzzer or something, app, what is the perfection, I feel, of what they wanted to try to do then? Because mm -hmm. before, it's like, oh, it's cool, it's gimmicky. The app because it can be updated and add the new modes, for example, and has the smart capacity to be like, okay, I know he's over here or here or here, to really sharpen that, to make that fun and those extra little noises that actually becomes this exciting game, not just, okay, just press the button. Just. Yeah, it feels like it's a world that's alive in a way. Stop thief, crits and misses. For crits, both the co-op and competitive modes provide a fun, puzzling challenge that feels balanced and well thought out. Yeah, it really is so much fun to hear those different noises and try to guess like the probability in areas that they possibly could be. The board layout and artwork is clean and aesthetically pleasing with some fun Easter eggs in there. Overall, just a nice sheen of polish on the whole thing. The app integration is well done, makes the game fun, more interactive, and it allows for them to provide updates throughout the future of the game, which is definitely exciting for replay value. I mean, free modes added without having to pay anything? I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good. For our misses, depending on how in the cooperative mode they do their quick movement or where they just happen to spawn in the competitive mode, you could just feel like you accidentally head the wrong way or didn't even have a chance to begin with. 
It can be mitigated some by your cards, but it can be a bit of a bummer to have that happen sometimes. We've noticed a couple of times while playing, when we passed the app around, so we didn't know if it was actually the ready for the next player's turn or not, because there really isn't a next player click. It's just the get a hint and someone might accidentally hit it twice. Yeah, I wish there was just a little more thought put into that particular aspect. You just have to be kind of careful when you're playing. What's really cool about this game is it lets you kind of do that thing that you see sometimes in detective movies where they hear the, the bad guy calling on the phone and it's like, oh, I heard a subway train in the background, which means they, they must have been on 34th Street, and then they go find them. This isn't quite that detailed. You basically just get kind of like five generic sounds. I mean, it'd be a little easy, too easy if you knew, oh, they're next to this car, for instance. But it gives you that same kind of feeling, and that's a really unique thing that no other game even attempts to do. So this, I, I really appreciate this game for being a modern interpretation of that very special mechanic. And what's nice is the competitiveness really does take that listening mechanic perfectly. It doesn't feel like tacked on. It's still great puzzle solving. It makes it shine. And the cooperative mode, the fact that you can all discuss it together then makes it also really great and fun to do. You get the bang for your buck, whether you get the money back from that criminal or not. Or if you stole in the first place. <laughs> uh, hey, check out Stop Thief. It's available now. Let us know what you think about it. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This has been a Roll for Crit review. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave some comments down below. Do it.